Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, please click the subscribe button or the like button or the down button, whichever one you choose to do at the moment. Um, why I decided to talk about this subject about pleasure costing us money is because you know, a lot of us, we do not realize why we end up spending money that we didn't intend to. And it's because we're all hardwired for pleasure. We want to feel pleasure. We want to give pleasure. And pleasure, it doesn't, because of the society we live in, doesn't always mean that you can't spend money. In the olden days, you could get pleasure just by looking at someone's eyes. You could hold their hands. You could talk to them, spend quality time with them, and that would give pleasure. You walk down the street, you pick up a flower from off of a bush or from, you know, from a garden. Not necessarily somebody else's garden, not like stealing, but you know what I mean. They used to just pick up a flower that was growing in a bush or something and you'd give it to the next person just to show and give that person pleasure and watching that person's face light up would give them pleasure and it also make you feel pleasurable but what's happened in today's society is that it's so expensive now to give pleasure and to feel pleasure and when you think about Christmas being a time where we want to please other people and we want not only please ourselves, Christmas is almost a time when we feel selfless. We have this buy now and pay later mentality. I'm going to get this for the children. Albeit that it, it doesn't really matter that the children are only happy for a day, not even a day sometimes. As soon as they've seen it, you see the smile on their face and they're all happy and then they throw it down and pick up the next thing. But for that one moment, second, minutes or hours of pleasure, it gives you pleasure. So you're willing to spend more money to bring pleasure to other people. So when you see the adverts on TV, they're designed to hone into all of your emotions. If you're happy, you'll feel you'll want to buy things for other people. I was looking at the perfumes. Every minute they're showing different perfumes, Joy, Paco Rabanne, Lady Million, you know, all of those, that lady that comes out of the water, J'adore. You know, it's all designed to make you want to feel pleasurable or, you know, make somebody else um, be happy or feel pleasure. So, you, you, you know, you're likely to spend about between 50 quid and 100 quid for one of those perfumes. Depending on whether or not you're depressed. Some people have that emotion they're depressed for some reason they've got a credit card, they might think, oh, I'm bored with my surroundings. I don't like where I live. They'll go and buy a new bedroom suite. And because Oakland is advertising a new dining room set, you know, with 50% off, they'll think, oh, that will cheer me up. That will give me pleasure. So off they go and they buy a dining room set or a bedroom suite or a sofa for what they don't really need, but just to lift their spirits. If they're angry, they'll buy something to appease themselves. You know, may, even if it's a drink, a bottle of wine, maybe it'd be a crate of beer. You know, but whatever it is, it will be to make them feel better and to give them pleasure. What about um, when somebody feels guilty? That's the worst one because you, you never feel as though you can spend enough to appease that guilt. You've done something to betray your partner or some other loved one and you want to make them feel happy so you go out and spend an arm and a leg for those children who put you on a guilt trip they might want a new tv or they might want a new phone or they might want a new game i mean i was looking uh, you know they keep advertising those games i was looking at those games nintendo switch it's 150 pound for used 250 pound for new or, you know, like I said, with the, they had a drum kit. And I was thinking, 
okay, it's 79.99. Somebody might think compared to a phone or compared to a new TV, a drum kit, that might be a good idea because I saw them advertising a drum kit the other day. But can you imagine the noise afterwards? After you spent 80 quid, that's how much it costs. And then they're coming out with the um, Amazon Echo and the, what's it? The Echo, the Dot. Where were those ones? I don't know where I'll put them now, but you know what I mean. Um, Alexa, Echo, Home Mini, Mini. They seem to be advertised now. And comparatively, they're so cheap. I mean, you can get one from between £50 to £100. So you might think, oh, I'm going to get my kids one of those. You know, but it's still £50, depending on how many children you've got. Hopefully you've only got one partner, so you only have to get one gift. But it's all designed to give people pleasure. All When you're spending money, it's designed to appease any one of your emotions, whether it's jealousy, whether it's guilt, whether it's sadness, whether it's depression, whether it's happiness. There's an advert that's going to hone into one of your emotions and make you spend money. And that's why I'm saying bringing pleasure or giving pleasure costs money that you don't intend to spend. So you've got to be really conscious about the real reason when you're buying something. Why are you buying it? Is it to give pleasure to someone else? Is it to give pleasure to yourself? Is it something that you can afford? You know, take the emotion out of the buying process and see how you feel about making a purchase. I just want to close by saying, um, where am I? I always do this. Excuse me, folks. If it's the first time, you'll know that I do this very often. Yeah, adverts are geared to confuse and attack or manipulate your emotions. Um, I saw that one, if you can't do something for someone this Christmas, that's appeasing to your, your, um, your guilt. They have this excess you know, have you seen those tables full of food that are on the... I don't even know where they get those tables that are so large. But stacked with food, making you feel that Christmas is a time for excess. You can buy more than you need. They have the whole family around. Those days are so rare. Unless you're from certain cultures... You know, the majority of people, it might be just the male, the female and a couple of kids. And if there's a lot of kids, OK, you might need a larger table. But it's designed to appeal to excess, spending more than you need when you don't really have to. Um, you know, in my day, you had the stockings up on the wall, you had chocolate in there. You know, it had an orange. You might be lucky to get a pair of socks, gloves, a knitted jumper. We were grateful. We were grateful for those little things. And if we were fortunate, we'd get a board game like Monopoly, Scrabble. Ah, oh, that was the height. And then we'd all, the whole family would sit around doing those card games. And the one where you act out the films and stuff like that. I forget what it's called. You know what I mean? And it was really, really nice. Those were the times when you really appreciated the small things because you didn't get them throughout the year. The problem with now is that you can get any one of those things throughout the year. You can have a tantrum. Children can have a tantrum and they'll, their parents will appease them just to give them pleasure and buy one of these gifts. So when Christmas comes, it's not special anymore because they've been getting things throughout the year. But if you deprive your child throughout the year, but then people have the mentality, oh, I'll do it today because um, tomorrow isn't promised to anyone. And that's true. But at the same token, it doesn't mean that you have to spend a lot of money throughout the year. You can, you can buy little gifts, show little bits of appreciation, go out for a little meal together. It doesn't have to, you know, a lot of these meals, they're expensive now. So it's hard to not spend money to give pleasure and to receive pleasure. But you can have picnics. They can be fun. 
you know, you can bring, you know, a little some music or, you know, make sure you've got your little favourite sandwiches and a drink. And if you've got a couple of blokes there, you bring some beer. You know, it can be nice and simple. You don't have to be spending all this money at the end of the year. And they're predicting that people are going to spend all this money, even though people haven't got it, because they're going to buy it on credit. Don't be predictable, peeps. So the price of pleasure has gone from £5 to £1,000 for presents. And I mean, in some cases, they're even throwing cars in there. So if you're pretty well off and you think, oh, that'd be nice. I never thought about that. Or my wife would love a car. You know, so an advertising Mercedes car. You know, if you've got it, all well and good. But like I said, some people go out of their way to please others. Self-sacrifice. That's what Christmas tells you. It tells you, you mustn't worry about your needs your circumstances at Christmas you are here to serve others don't get dragged into the, the the hype people don't get dragged into it so the price of pleasure has got so expensive from boat cruises large TVs the latest phones digital entertainment we need to reassess what brings us pleasure so that we can keep more money in our pockets I believe that, you know, what I, my strategy at Christmas, I mean, I don't go all out because I'm not a Christmassy person. I won't be putting um, decorations up and all that stuff, you know, for my grandchildren. I'll do something, a little something for them, but nothing major. If they see a little tree or they see a few lights, they, they, they've been grown in a way that they appreciate the small things. So what I tend to do is if I see things throughout the year, I'll buy it as I see them. Like I said, I love a bargain. So if I see bargains throughout the year, I'll always be thinking, oh, I can get that for so-and-so for Christmas. Even if it's February, March, April, and I have a drawer and I put all the little bits in. So when Christmas comes, I only have to worry about two people. And that's my two grandchildren. Because for the rest of the time, I've already catered for the rest of my family and my friends and my love. Well, I don't, I'm, I've stopped even um, buying for the extended family. I used to buy for the extended family. And it's not like you give to get, but I'm one person. And I used to find myself buying stacks of presents and I wouldn't even get two or three. And like I said, it's not to give or get, it's but to put things into perspective and to make sure I'm giving for the right reason. So now my mum is a definite, my partner is a definite, my children are a definites and my grandchildren are definites and then we have the secret santa at work is limited to 10 pounds you know i'll always look for a bargain so that even though it's 10 pounds i'll look for something that was 20 pounds and got 50 percent off so they get a decent present and so that's how i work peeps so it might be helpful for you to do that have a little place in your house or in your flat or in your room where if you do see things throughout the year, you can pick it up when you've got it. And so when this time of year comes, when you, you don't feel pressured by all the advertising, you don't need have the need to feel the need to go out of your way to bring pleasure to others. I love seeing a smile on my grandchildren's face. Don't get me wrong, but I've worked in a way that it doesn't have to cost me. I'm not spending more than 50 pounds. That is my that is my, what you mind, my boundary for my grandkids. That is the maximum. And what um, what his parents do is that they will they will tell people to give him money. And it, whether it's five pounds, ten pounds, fifty pounds, whatever it is, and then cumulatively he'll be able to get what he wants, that one gift or whatever. But it's not putting the burden on his mother. And that works. And it's not like he needs more than one present. If he gets two or three presents, he's happy. If my granddaughter gets two or three presents, she's happy. So that's the way I do it. So, and I feel happy. 
and you know getting together at Christmas and just being in each other's company because through the year I'm so busy they're busy and just having that time together is what gives me pleasure gives them pleasure and everyone's happy and we don't have to spend that much money and that's all I wanted to share with you people bye bye have a good day